السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفى سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله وبعد my dear viewers welcome to another live edition of Ask Koda as usual allow me to remind you with our phone numbers beginning with area code 002 then 01005469323 and we have uh, two whatsapp numbers area code 0013478060025 and finally area code 0013614891503 um, we're also live on my facebook page that is M Salah official as well as the youtube channel which should appear on the bottom of the screen all the info uh, Dr. Muhammad Salah, and we'll be happy to start collecting your calls and questions. Meanwhile, let me tackle the questions which I received earlier. Uh, Farija Newly, Sister Farija, is asking, I wanted to know about the bank interest. As I'm getting interest, and I know the exact amount, can I give uh, this interest to charity? Well, first of all, we'd like to explain that. The interest that is accumulated on the money which is deposited in the bank not for business which is a saving account or investment with the bank where the bank guarantees to give you a certain percentage on your saving or your money which you deposit with them and they guarantee that percentage this is pure usury this is pure riba so we call it interest not a profit accordingly not only that it is haram to take it, but it is also haram to deal with it and to agree to deposit it and take interest from the beginning unless if it is necessary to save your money somewhere and we don't have the alternative. Like in most Western and non-Muslim countries. So you keep your money and whatever interest is accumulated, you collect it in order to give it away and get rid of it. As I will explain how after this call, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Muhammad from India, welcome to Ask Koda. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sheikh, wa alaikum assalam. Uh, Sheikh, I have a few questions, so I'll just uh, ask them. So the first is, uh, uh, I live in India, so I have a lot of temples surrounding my house. So uh, uh, when I buy, is it necessary that I need to move out of this locality because I have temples on east, west, north and south? because I'm living in an area where there is majority of Hindus. That's my first question. And the second question is, uh, do I need to make a niya before I pray? For example, if I pray two rakat of sunnah, and if I just forget and I make it as four, uh, am I sinful? Do I have to repeat it? Or can I just uh, go ahead with it and uh, do sajda at the end of the fourth rakat? Third is, I'm overwhelmed by a lot of difficulties. Uh, is there any any prayer uh, which I can pray and ask forgiveness so that Allah removes my difficulties and uh, guides me, inshallah? Sure. So these inshallah. are three questions which I have, Sheikh. Jazakallah khairan. Jazakallah khairan, Muhammad from India. Assalamu alaikum. Zinat from the USA. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Zinat. Dr. Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How, Sister Zinat, go how ahead. How are you and your family? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing great. May I ask you, what time is it in your locality? Today is a lucky day. It's 10.15 a.m. in the morning. 10.15 a.m. MashaAllah. Why is it a lucky day? And I'm off. I'm off and I have a chance to again call you today. That's Alhamdulillah. Why. Barakallahu alaykum, Sister Zina. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. One of my friends give me, his, they are very close to me. Uh, so they want to give four thousand dollar jakat money because I am a treasurer of the Islamic Center. Also, I work as a social uh, volunteer in the Islamic Center. Mm. So they give me four thousand dollar jakat to give to the needy people. Okay, mm. there are two needy people on my list, and both of them want car for the family. They don't have a car, so. If I want to get rid of my car and keep the money, can I do it or not? Well, if I were my you... car value is three. One of my old car, my son car value is three thousand six hundred right now. Okay, sister Zinat, if I were yes. you, if I were you, mm -hmm. I wouldn't do mm -hmm. that. 
I wouldn't do okay. that. I would sell my car to somebody else and yeah. give okay. the zakat to the family in cash. Well, I can give the two families, each one $2,000. They can still buy a decent used car for two gains. I know that. And I'm out of it. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, فَمَنِ اتَّقَ الشُّبُهَاتِ فَقَدِ اسْتَبْرَأَ لِدِينِهِ وَعِرْضِهِ Whenever you avoid the doubtful matters, this is better for you in respect of your religious commitment and your honor. So my advice to you is, you are interested with people to distribute the zakat. It must be given in cash. So give each family a couple thousand, and alhamdulillah, shukullah, you're off the hook. You'll be rewarded for that. Now you want to sell your used car? Sell it to somebody else and collect the price. May Allah bless you and your family. Muhammad from the Philippines, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, Muhammad, and you? Alhamdulillah, I'm fine, Sheikh. Thank you for asking. Uh, Sheikh, I have two questions, Sheikh. Yes. Uh, my first question, Sheikh, is Sheikh, can you explain me how to do sujud as sound? Because I don't know how to perform this, Sheikh. Okay. And my second question, Sheikh, is Sheikh, you know, in Jum'a prayer, uh, when the is there anything to say specific after the Imam finishes his first sermon? Because I see people making dua and saying something. In between the two uh, khutbah in the sitting, Muhammad got your question, your first question. In the second, I just guessed that. Right. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Fatima from Bangladesh. Sister Fatima, go ahead. Hello, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Would you tell me what time is it in Bangladesh now? Um, now it is 8.16. PM. 9. Yes. Yes, PM. 8 PM, okay. So yes. Subhanallah, Zinat from the USA, it's 10 uh, a.m. or 10.15. Now it is 8.16 p.m. in Bangladesh. Okay, yes, Fatima, sir. go ahead. What is your question, Sister Fatima? Uh, Sheikh, my name is Shafina. Shafina? Yes, sir. Okay, Shafina. Okay. So we got to correct that yes. name. Shafina, what yes, is your Sheikh, question? I have... I have a question that my college is far from my house and for that reason the work of Zuhar came on to my college and I uh, because there is no preparation for a girl to do wudu or tayammum in that place and if I have to do that I have to um, harm my uh, parda so what can I do uh, that I, if I am in, I am traveling in my bus or am I, I am in college, can I do the prayer without wudu or tayammum? Is it permissible? And if not, then what kind of thing I can do to um, make me able to do prayer? Okay, I got your questions. Uh, what, what is your name again? Shafina Islam. Shafina Islam, what does it mean yes, in sir. English? English In English, what does Shafina Islam mean? I don't know, because um, as far Shafina is, I think it is called boat in uh, Arabic. I don't know what is the meaning of uh, it. In, Arabic, in, in Arabic, I promise you, we don't have the uh, word in Arabic. Okay. Yes, sir. We don't have that word in Arabic. I want you to search for it, and next time, inshallah, you oh. share with us the meaning of that name. It's okay, even if it has inshallah, inshallah. In English. Shafina, thank you. Uh, we'll answer you, inshallah. Abdullah from Bangladesh. That's a familiar name. Okay, Abdullah, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, Sheikh. How are you, Sheikh? Abdullah, I guess I know what time is it now in Bangladesh. It's 8.17. Am I correct? Yes. Okay, go yes, ahead. Sheikh, you're right. <laughs> um, my question is, can we backbite non-Muslims? And if we can't, then what's the dalil behind this? And when is it permissible for a Muslim to backbite? The question is, 
Abdullah, why would you backbite anyone, whether Muslims or non-Muslims? Why? What is the purpose? Would when that make you feel satisfied? Wrong, and when they are doing it wrong publicly, and we need to warn someone, can we do that in you see, that it, cases? You see, there is a difference between whenever I'm asked for a testimony, whenever I'm consulted, so I give my testimony or I give my opinion within the limitations of the question. Like somebody is asking me, you know, you know, this person, we're planning to do business together. What do you think? He's your neighbor, whether a Muslim or no Muslim. Well, you know, that person was involved in many businesses and he's proven to be not honest. So you say, I wouldn't advise you because there are experiences before. And that's yes. it. For a stop to that. Is this backbiting? Yes, Sheikh. Uh, no. When, as in general, as we know that uh, Allah says in the Quran that we need to talk with people with a good, uh, but uh, is it same for the Muslims and the non-Muslims or does it differ? Yeah, when it is sin. Backbiting is horrible for the Muslims. It is sin for everyone. But is it same for the non-Muslims? I hope you hear me. Yes, it's a sin for everyone, Muslims and non-Muslims. Yes. Do not backbite no one. And there is a difference okay. between whenever I'm asked by the judge or a legal judgment, I need to give a testimony. So I give the testimony based on my certain knowledge and I limit it to that. And then somebody is asking me to vouch or not to vouch the credibility of somebody or to tell him what I know about him. In respect of marriage, in respect of business, in respect of rent and a property. So again, you will give the answer within the limitations of the question. Barakallahu feekum. Beyond that, it is backbiting. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Aisha from Canada. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Sheikh, I have three questions today. Um, my first question is, um, I came across a video that said um, there will be a day that um, there, there will be no Quran left in the world. And there will come a wind from the Yemen, and everybody, all the Muslims will die. Could you explain this in detail for me, please? Sure. So um, that is your first question. What is the second? Uh, the second one is, um, uh, it's about Udu. So um, since we um, uh, do five times a day Udu, I was wondering if uh, just wiping the feet uh, over the socks um, is sufficient enough. And also if um, we just, instead of, in stensha, instead of um, running the water, it, can we just um, wipe our private parts um, with water? Is that sufficient enough as well? And my third question is, uh, my work uniform is, um, a shirt and a pants. So, and I do pray uh, with those clothes. I was wondering if that is acceptable. Um, I'm trying to look for a job where I can dress appropriately, but uh, by then, I, I really feel um, I, I don't feel comfortable praying in these clothes. Um, okay. Got your question, you... Sister Aisha. I got three questions already. What time is it in Canada now? Where you live? It's uh, 10.22. So you're, you're Eastern Toronto. time. You're Eastern time, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Got your question, Sister Aisha. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Tasneem from Oman. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's such a pleasure to hear your voice and talk to you. Thank you, Sister Tasneem. Likewise, may Allah bless you and your family. How can I help you? Amen. Uh, my daughter is going to get married, inshallah, next month. Congratulations. But the boy is in an other. Thank you so much. And make dua for her that it's a happy reunion. May Allah bless them both and make them a happy couple and grant them a goodly offspring. Amen. Amen. So the thing is that the boy is in another country. And my daughter is here. So we are planning on online nikah. And uh, we don't know how to go about it. Sure. I will walk you through, inshallah. I'll be happy to do that.
Okay, and then there is another question which I would like to ask, mm -hmm. uh, if you don't mind. Okay, go ahead. In a marriage, is it that the husband is your leader and you have to follow him in whatever he says? Okay. Even in small things, like suppose my husband is a very good man, very kind, generous. Mashallah. I'm sure he is. But, I'm sure he is. But he's with me. But I'm sure he, he is. Allow me, allow <laughs> me to do anything. Like I cannot shift the table from one room to another. Okay. And if I do that, he will say that if you want to be the leader, you be the leader. In Islam, there is only one leader. Okay. So they cannot be two leaders. So he's and sitting next to you. Never. He's sitting next to you no, and he's, he's going to hear the answer, correct? No, he's not next to me, but I'm going to make him uh, hear uh, whatever advice you give. Okay. No problem, Sister Tasni. Barakallahu. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Amy from India. Assalamu alaikum, Amy. Amy. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you again, Sheikh Muhammad Salah. Thank you, Sister Ini. You're calling from India, but you sound like you're from the Philippines. Am I correct? Uh, I'm from Indonesia originally, from Indonesia. but I'm yes. living here in Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, correct. Uh, before I have one question, but before that, I just want to mention that uh, my husband is a big fan of yours. We are for the Asuda team. Every day we are watching and we are searching the video from the YouTube. Alhamdulillah. May Allah, to, may Allah just, conceal our sins, our faults and shortcomings and make us better what people think of us. Ameen. Inshallah. Inshallah. The same thing for all of you who share the knowledge. Amen. That's why we gain more knowledge as well. Amen. Uh, uh, Sheikh, I have only one question, which is uh, if I miss the prayer of Asar and Maghrib, and it's already time for Isha, which prayer shall I pray first? Pray in That's order. all. Jazakallah. Jazana wa iyakum. So you gotta pray in the same order, uh, Sister Aini. So if I, pay, if I miss Dhuhr, if I miss Asr, and I hope that you've missed it for a legal reason, like you were asleep, for instance, it was uh, by mistake or you've forgotten. So in this case, you pray Dhuhr, you pray Asr, you pray Maghrib, then you pray Aisha. You cannot skip the order. Barakallahu fiki. May Allah bless you and your husband. Um, Faris from Belgium. Assalamu alaikum. Walaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Ustaz. Kifa halik? Alhamdulillah. Faris, how are you and how's your family? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And what time is it in Belgium now? It's now 16.25. 16 or 6? 16, 16. 16, you mean it's 4. It's 4.25. p.m. Yeah. 4 25 yeah, 25 p.m. Okay, you're, yes. you're pretty much like uh, the Middle East, like in Cairo. Yes. Okay. So, so Faris, how can I help you? I had a question. So, I had a question about uh, the fact uh, I was uh, married with someone who mm. is not conver is converted uh, to Islam. Mm. Um, she was a person, Christian. Protestant Christian, uh, but we had a lot of problems in our in our marriage. But the question was, uh, we 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 have uh, make made divorce uh, several times, uh, two times. But the second time we did not have a divorce like it it has to be, mm. like the sunnah. Mm. So now we I took her uh, with me. Uh, we I f we forget each other from the problems and stuff we had, mm -hmm. but we tried a third time. But the third time, uh, I I divorced uh, also because we had a lot of problems, pressure with kids. Uh, she had she has a kid. I have a kid from another uh, woman also. I I am all, uh, also divorced once. Um, so at that point. Uh, we divorced because of the problems because of our exes. 
So uh, our exes uh, are always so given problems in our situation. Paris, her Paris. family also. Paris, what is the question? So I want to know if if I stay with her, is it haram for me to stay with her? Because I, I uh, said at the third time divorce in anger. So I wanted to know if it's possible to stay with her or I, not or give her a chance I, I or got not. Your question. With her not. Yeah, I got your question. So Faris is asking about what is the hukm for divorcing one's wife while angry, okay? <clears throat> and this is what I expected. All right, so let's put the calls on hold for a moment now. Muhammad from India, his first question about uh, he's living somewhere where his house is surrounded with temples. So he living in a country which is predominantly non-Muslims. Muslims, even though there are hundreds of millions, but still they are minority. If you have an access to live in a Muslim neighborhood, you should do it immediately. If you have an access to move next to a masjid where you can hear the adhan and your kids attend the classes, you should do it, no doubt. But if the person is stuck somewhere, I don't have money, I don't have an access, I'm working where I, I live, so this is an excuse. Before I offer the prayer, I must formulate an intention, and the intention is in the heart, I don't have to utter it with the tongue. So if I just get up and pray, what prayer is it? If I, after say the Allahu Akbar, well, let me make it zuhr, or the sun of Lord that doesn't count. It, the naya, the intention must precede the action. The intention must precede the action. You can't just pray without an intention. There is an intention of mutlaq naf Like, what time is it? Well, it's 11 a.m. Okay, let me pray. Two, four, six rakas. That's called awabin prayer. I don't know it's called awabin prayer, but I'm just praying, okay? Between Maghrib and Isha, Sunnah is two rakas. But I just prayed until Isha. It's permissible. After Isha at night, I kept on praying. General nawafil, no problem. But you say, Allahu Akbar, you decide to change the niyyah. Let me make it the Sunnah after Dhuh. That doesn't count. As far as the supplication to remove the trouble which is affecting you, I love this supplication. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al wal hazan. And the supplication will be posted immediately on my page, inshallah, on the Facebook and hopefully on the YouTube, the Arabic and the English meaning. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to quote the, English, the Arabic text. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al wal hazan, wal ajizi wal kasal, wal jubni wal bukhl, wa a'udhu bika min ghalabat al dayni. وقهر الرجال يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك أستغيث أصلح لي شأني كله ولا تكلني إلى نفسي طرفة عين As I said inshallah you will find the supplication on my page on my facebook page if I have an access to do during the break on the youtube I will do it as well السلام عليكم نيجر from بنغلاديش Nigar, Salaamu Alaikum. Salaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah. I'm doing great, Nigar. What about yourself? Alhamdulillah. I'm also fine. Okay. Sheikh, I have three questions. Yes. Uh, my first question is, my mother, when she bow or post prostate, she sometimes urinate a little bit. Not more. This breaks her udu sometimes so she prays sitting is it permissible if not can you suggest me anything for my mother well that's a very my interesting question but you say that she has this urine incontinence all the time or sometimes sometimes okay sometimes so this is not like urine incontinence where she's diagnosed with the urine incontinence all the time right Right, sir. Okay. Right. Second question, please. Uh, uh, she, can you suggest me any dua or supplication for getting married? Like I was trying and my family was trying for more than a year and still I'm not getting married. And I feel that there is some evil eye or black magic or sir. Could well, you please suggest well, me? Well, well yeah. it's, it's possible. But even if there is, I'm not going to 
count on that or blame it on that. In your prostration, say, Oh Allah, grant me a goodly spouse. You know, Sister Nigger, there's a beautiful supplication specifically for that. When you say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi akhirati hasanatan wa qina adab al Many of the commentators of the Quran said the good reward of the dunya is a good spouse. So when you say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan, it's a very comprehensive dua. More specifically, Rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yunin waj'anna lilmuttaqina imama. We all, brothers and sisters, married and intending to get married, wanting to get married, having difficulty to get married, are already married and we want to have children. We are married and we're already having children. This dua is for all of us. Our Lord grant us from our spouses and our offspring comfort for our eyes, peace for our mind, and make us leaders for the pious. So remember, Nigar. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yunin wa ja'anna lil muttaqina imama. Barakallahu fiki. Uh, with regards to your respected mother, if that happens occasionally, then she will have to renew her wudu after washing the private and cleaning up her undergarment. But if this process is continuous and she cannot rid of it, in this case, she will make wudu after the adhan has been called or the time has entered, and she will pray with this wudu as many prayers as she wants, even if the urine is continuous. But if it happens occasionally, then interrupt your prayer, clean up the spot, and make wudu again. Barakallahu feek. Assalamu alaikum. Muddathir from Finland. Assalamu alaikum. Ya Muddathir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi sheikh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Wuda Akhi. Sheikh, I have, uh, Jazakumullah khairan. I have one question. No. I would like to know if uh, giving zakah uh, money to Huda TV is permissible or not. It would be nice to know about it. Well, in the case of making programs, particularly for production, so that it's a means of da'wah, where alhamdulillah we have many non-Muslims accept, accepted Islam, then it is permissible, akhi. Barakallahu feekum. So you got to specify, you got to specify. When you give somebody zakah, say this is zakah money, then they will become liable. So Muhammad Salah cannot take anything out of it. Uh, and I cannot spend this money on uh, inviting people for food or making coffee and tea. It is for the production of programs that serves the purpose of da'wah. That must be clear. Brothers and sisters, love you all for the sake of Allah. And we're going to take a short break. But guess what? Even before I go for a break, the supplication, the sister Nigar, uh, oh, Muhammad from India, requested is already posted. MashaAllah, people write on top of it. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless Huda TV and the staff and the cast and everyone who's working in it and all of those who are supporting its programs and of course the viewers. Let's take a short break. We'll be back inshallah in a couple minutes. Please stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Our phone numbers as they should appear on the bottom of the screen beginning with the area code 001 That's our WhatsApp number. And um, there is another number, area code 001-347-806-0025, another WhatsApp number. In addition to the local line, which is area code 002, then 01 Two, three. We have some callers. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Yusuf from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, Sheikh. Go ahead, Akhi. Welcome to the program. My mom wants advice from you and do are from the entire Ummah. She's asking that if a Muslim has a prevailing issue for over 10 years despite constant supplication, what should the person do? What is the condition that is remaining for 10 years? That if a Muslim has a prevailing issue. What is that prevailing over... issue? She didn't specify. 
Well, I, well, I can't answer something which is not specific. I don't know what is the issue. I mean, could it be a test, a trial? You mean you may, maybe you say a Muslim is not being praying for ten years? What is the situation? I I don't have a question to answer. Yusuf, I can let me ask. Yes, yeah, sure. So, go ahead. I'm waiting. She can talk to okay. me as well. It's okay. Okay. Abu Khalid from the UK. Assalamu alaikum, Abu Khalid. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to Ask Huda. Marhaba Bishaykh Muhammad Salah. My name is Abu Khalid. I'm calling from Glasgow, Scotland, UK. Ahlan wa sahlan and welcome to the program. Abu Khalid, you're most welcome. Go ahead. I have two questions. Mm -hmm. One question, Alhamdulillah, I got five children. They grow up already. Everyone go his own house, just me and my wife in the house Masha in this Allah. case i can leave my wife alone and go mosque to pray jamaat well if you live uh, nearby the mosque you should do that when you come home you can pray with her again if you want to and if she prays on her own by herself that's perfectly valid so okay. if you and live... the second and the second question mm. sheikh mm. Uh, i want to know the difference between wahhabia and the sufia why not, insha'Allah? Uh, in order to answer this question, I will get to answer all the pending questions first, then insha'Allah I'll be happy to answer you. And which one do you follow, okay. uh, Abu Khalid? Basically, I grew up with uh, Sufia, I grew up. When, I'm, I'm, uh, when I came to UK, so I don't have uh, many community with me here, and I heard some people, they say the Sufia, they are wrong. That's okay. why I want to clarify to me, please. Fir first of all, Abu Khalid, you tell me where you originally from? Uh, Palestine or Yemen? I'm from where? Yemen. Yemen, Yemen. Yemen, Yemen. Okay. So, Yemen, Yemen is Saeed. Yemen, hopefully, they will be Saeed, inshallah, when it recovers, inshallah. Yeah, 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 Abu Khalid, quickly. I want you to think about the practices that you used to do before when you were following such party or group. Okay? Do you recall any of them? Abu Khalid? Yes, yes, I'm with you, Sheikh. What are okay. you saying? I want you to, by the time we take some other callers, think about the practices which made you think that you're following Sufis. Okay? What you used to do? What made okay. you different than the regular Muslims? And like, call they, us. Like, like they make a molid. Okay, what else? So just a molid, that's it. That's it. You sure? Yes, and many things, but I forgot, I have been UK 15 years now. Okay. I can't remember what was done, but the main thing was molid. Sure. That's why. Barakallah. Zakallah khairan. Abu Khalid from the UK. Assalamu alaikum, Umm Kulthum from the UK. How are you? I'm doing just fine, alhamdulillah, sister Umm Kulthum. And you? Uh, I'm okay, thank you. I want to ask one question about the uh, waswasa. Can I do um, ruqya for myself for the waswasa? All the time. You definitely can do ruqya for yourself, and it is recommended to do so. I don't have heavy, heavy, heavy waswasa when I pray. I can pray peacefully. So that's why I'm asking, can I do ruqya? In the, in the prayer, in the prayer, when you have this waswasa, just turn to the yes, left yes. side and say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim. Okay? And okay. move on with your okay. prayer. May Allah bless you and remove that waswasa from you, Umm Kulthum. All right. Uh, Aisha, Sister Aisha from Canada. Can you imagine started having to left the glasses to read? I think I need another reading glasses. It's time. Getting old. Aisha from Canada asked about, she heard in some videos that by the end of the time, the Quran will be lifted and nothing would remain out of it. As a matter of fact, that is true. It is one of the signs preceding the Day of Judgment. Uh, 
عبد الله بن مسعود may Allah be pleased with him he said أكثروا تلاوة القرآن قبل أن يرفع recite the Quran as much as you can before it will be lifted لا يسيرن على القرآن ذات ليلة فلا يترك آية في المصحف as a matter of fact the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم prophesies that Allah the Almighty will take the souls of all the Hufaz and know and those who know the Quran so none of those who know the Quran would remain alive. And then they will find the Quran, the cup is there, but erased. No wordings in it, no writings in it, subhanAllah. In this case, this is a sign of the approaching of the Day of Judgment. But it will happen when people would forget anything and everything about Islam, even the word, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إن الله لا يرفع العلم انتزاعا من صدور العلماء ولكن بأخذ أرواح العلماء which means Allah the Almighty would not cause the Hufaz and the scholars to forget knowledge and not to remember the Quran no no this is not going to happen like you know collaterally or all of them what will happen is that their souls will be taken. فَلَا يَبْقَى إِلَّا رُؤُوسًا جُهَالًا No one would remain but some potato heads, ignorant people. And when people turn to them, since they look like leaders, like they know what is going, so they ask them. So they, يُفْتُونَ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ They will answer them with no knowledge. فَيَضِلُّونَ وَيُضِلُّونَ So they go astray, and they will lead others astray. May Allah protect us against that. We have the Quran. Let's go ahead and take advantage of that and read it as often as possible. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Tasneem from the USA. That's a different Tasneem. MashaAllah. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, I have a question. So I have a one year old daughter who plays with uh, toys in the living room which the toys have faces in them. And at times, you know, we have the TV running with the Islamic uh, rhymes and all without any music. Mm -hmm. So am I restricting angels to come enter my house if that's going on? No. And if she's playing with the toys in the no. living room? No, no, no. That doesn't apply to that. Okay. The hadith talks about when I willingly chose to put a statue, okay, at home. Mm -hmm. So this is not permissible, and that prevents the angel from entering. But the toys, the puppets that the kids play with, that doesn't apply to that. And subhanAllah... Even the TV running with the yes, cartoons. No problem as well. No problem. It was my intent to name one of my daughters if I were to have any Tasneem. Because Tasneem is the name of a water spring in heaven. The Almighty Allah says in Surah Al-Mutafifin, وَمِزَاجُهُ مِن تَسْنِيمٍ عَيْنًا يَشْرَبُ بِهَا الْمُقَرَّبُونَ But because I do believe that the Almighty Allah commanded us to do mashura, and a husband and a leadership does not mean to be dictator and to impose your views. My wife liked the name Ruqayya. So I said, okay, Ruqayya. Even when I have another daughter, she said, Sarah. I said, okay. Sarah, I yield. Why am I saying that? I mean, normally I don't like to speak about my private life. But I'm saying that to answer the question of our respected sister. From, I think, it was Tasneem from uh, Oman. Subhanallah. When, he, uh, when she asked about, you know, uh, her son is getting married or her daughter is getting married online and the husband is in another country, and that is permissible, provided that all the parties are known. There is ijab and qabul. And uh, your husband, who is the guardian of the girl, is present and he agrees to such marriage. Everything on the video conference is clear and recorded. Go ahead, bismillah. That's a valid marriage. And she says that the husband is a leader and in everything. So he says that you do not move a table from one place to another or put it in another room without my command. So that's why I wanted to share even in the name. فَإِنْ أَرَادَ فِصَالًا عَنْ تَرَادٍ مِّنْهُمَا وَتَشَاوُرٍ فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْهِمَا The ayah 
talks about breastfeeding. And the wife who's breastfeeding, if she decides, you know what, enough is enough. The baby now is able to eat on his or her own. A year later, 12 months, 13 months, even though Allah recommended, Let the mothers, the breastfeeding mothers, suckle their babies for two complete years. This is healthier, and this is what Allah recommended. But if they decide the weaning before that, in arada, both of them do well. Fisalan an taradim min huma, both of them are in agreement. Wa tashawurin, mutual consultation. Honey, what do you think? I think I'm getting really weak, and my hemoglobin is uh, very low. I, I I don't think I can breastfeed the baby anymore. And by the way, the formula is doing okay, and the baby can eat now. So they discuss the matter, and they decide, okay, let's do it. Or if the husband is a doctor and says, honey, but it is healthier for the baby. Let me give you some multivitamins, uh, prenatal or whatever, so that you can continue for a couple more months. There is what? Mashura. When a man is very meticulous, that why did you put the keychain here? You should put them there. You should not move them from this place to that place without my, not to that extent. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't do that. Yes, a man is in a charge so that no one would enter, enter his house without his knowledge, without his permission. And uh, if I'm going anywhere, if I'm traveling, if I'm spending out of his money, I have to let him know. But not the very fine details. Okay? So that life will be easy. And it is based on mutual consultation. May Allah make it easy uh, for all of us. Uh, what else? Sister Zinat from the USA. Can a person wipe on their socks at home even though if I'm not musafir? Yes. Provided before you put your socks on, you have wudu. And also, nowadays we see the new fashion socks, the low-cut socks. You can't wipe on them because they are below the ankle. So whatever we wash in wudu must be covered with the leather socks, with the boots, with the socks, the cotton socks. They cover the ankles and you put them on after you have wudu so you can wipe over them for a day and night. Muhammad from the Philippines, how to perform uh, sujuru as-sahu? Also, Sister Zinat had another question about uh, the dry istinja or wiping on one's problem. There is nothing called wiping. In istinja, which is removing the impurities and cleaning the orifices after answering the call of nature, you can use the tissues, so that is dry. You can use water, but not wiping, washing, so that nothing remains out of the impurities. Using the tissues, the napkins alone, as long as it does the purpose, it's permissible. But nothing is better than water, of course. How to pray Sururu Sahwi? A program called the Prophet's Prayer. Check it out and you'll find an episode where we talk about how to make Sururu Sah. But in brief, I forgot the middle tashahud or I prayed one raka missing, then I was reminded and I made it up, I continued uh, afterward. By the end, you say, after you recited the tashahud, the last tahiyyat, and before making tasleem, you make two prostrations. One, Allahu Akbar, then Allahu Akbar. Then again, Allahu Akbar, and you sit, and you make tasleem without reciting another uh, tashahud. Sister, um, our sister from Bangladesh, uh, Shafima or Shafina, Shafina or Islam, if, if somebody got stuck in the bus, in any means of transportation, and I'm afraid that the time will be out, I don't have, let's say, if I have wudu first, can I stand up in the bus and pray? No, the bus, the roof is very low, so I cannot stand up. Okay, in this case, pray in your seat. But I'm not facing the qibla, I know, but what can you do? This is to the best of your ability, as much as you can, in order to catch the prayer before its time is out. I don't have water as well. So the scholar said, you make tayammum in your seat, you pray, and when you get off the bus, you make wudu and do the prayer again. Um, our brother who asked, Abdullah from Bangladesh, 
also who asked about uh, divorce while angry. Uh, Belgium from from Belgium. Abdullah or Faris from Belgium. Faris from Belgium. Once, twice, three separate times, and now he wants to relive with his ex-wife based on the fact that he says that one of those divorces was whenever I was angry. What well, we hear this all the time, all the time. Recently, I have a case. Somebody brought his own son, and he told me a long story. Now, he is preparing the mufti mentally to give a specific answer. So I say to the person that you are going to give fatwa to yourself. If you were so angry to the point that you didn't know what you were saying, you didn't realize that you've divorced your wife, you're out of your mind, then that divorce doesn't count. But normal or regular anger, where there is a dispute between you and your wife over anything, so she aggravates you, aggravate her, and you say, you're divorced. That divorce is effective and it counts because you're fully aware of what you have uttered. May Allah make it easy for all of us. We ran out of time to be continued insha'Allah some other time. Until next time, I leave you all in the care of Allah. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Allah is my heart's speech. Your mercy is what I beseech. Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your deen allow me to advance. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test. Help me in my quest, permit me to pass the ultimate test. Allah is my heart's speech, your mercy is what I beseech.